Do you get my emails? Hmm? Do you sometimes get emails intended to me? <laughs> yes, I do. I do. I do often, actually. Yeah, so I don't get your emails. Oh, I think it's because your uh, email is just zogby at, <laughs> at BCM or something I like see. that. I yeah. See. I don't need any more emails. No, I know. <laughs> During high school, he spent different summers in different labs, one imaging and then one molecular lab. And he would visit my lab from time to time and he would say, you know, there's got to be a better way to make this efficient. We need to invent a lot more robots, a lot more machines to do what you guys do every day in the lab. I remember that. Yeah. You remember I think the... it was because I was so bored in the, in the wet lab <laughs> that I was always trying to think of ways to just like speed the process up. I think that's why I went into computational, <laughs> yes. computational genetics. Yeah. Couldn't wait. How did you feel about growing up in a household with two physician parents? I think Overall, it was a good experience. It was always nice, you know, if there was ever something wrong, I generally trusted you guys to take good care of us. Um, I do think that our dinner conversations evolved over time. And when I was young, uh, there was lots of talk about science at the table. Um, and I kind of was initially not so interested in it, but as time went on uh, and I got more and more interested, it was really nice actually to be able to talk about those things. And I'm sure that it impacted me uh, in my decision to try to become a scientist and physician. Um, so yeah, I think overall it was actually a pretty good experience, I'd say. I remember vividly that you said, you don't want to do medicine, we, we, we work way too hard. And then you ended up coming to Baylor College of Medicine for medical school and Christmas holiday came and you said, I miss school. Now I understand. You love what you work, what yeah. you do. Yeah. Did you always know that I would go into medicine or did you think there was a chance I might take another path? I actually did not think you'll go into medicine. If I was to bet, it would have been either philosophy or music. One of those two, because you've always read intensely and you were very interested even at a young age on more philosophical issues. You'll have very deep discussions about everything possible since the age of 10 or 11. And then really you became passionate about music when you were about 14, 15. You used to play piano and then you took up the drums and you formed a band and new music like no other. And I thought you may end up with a career in music. So all of that really changed I would say when you started looking at colleges and you became fascinated with the brain, then I got to start to think that maybe you are going to go perhaps the path of medicine. Yeah, it was kind of an interesting path. Um, you know, I, I'm glad that I took the path that I, that I did. Um, and I try to still maintain some of those hobbies, but medicine certainly took over. <laughs> So you went to Columbia for residency, and I remember vividly well, when you were in residency in medicine at Columbia the first year, you're calling about a patient, and the doctor at the receiving end asks you, who are you? Where did you train? So how did you feel about going to Baylor and, you know, thoughts about what brought you back? I mean, I like to say there's nothing like Baylor medical student. We are extremely well trained at Baylor and I think really learn to take a lot of ownership and autonomy of our patients. And I think we feel or felt at least equipped and ready to handle whatever came at us. And I think that in other institutions, uh, they may not place the same kind of emphasis on patient care and really getting their hands dirty uh, in terms of the work. And so I feel like Baylor trained us really, really well. And it was probably a huge part of the reason why I wanted to come back. I felt like 
you know, in some ways this was my academic home. Uh, I had grown up here essentially, coming into the lab with you uh, when I was a kid. Um, and so there was very much a familiar feeling of coming back home. You know, I, I recall what it was like growing up together, uh, but what's it like for you with us working together? Because uh, now, you know, we're not just at Baylor together, but we really do in some ways kind of work together on, on pretty similar problems. So what's that like for you uh, as a mom? Yeah, so of course, I mean, the amount of pride and joy I take from watching you speak, watching you you know, help solve a problem, watching you think about exciting things in the future, watching you dream what you could do for Baylor, given the, you know, skills you have, makes me extremely proud. But I have to tell you something you may not know. At this point, I'm learning more from you than I ever imagined. So I find myself learning constantly from you. And having you here, I feel this is a fantastic opportunity for me to keep you know, learning the field and growing because honestly, that's the challenge. That's the future. We've solved the sim we're solving majority of single Mendelian genetic disorders, but thinking about these complex disorders, it, I learn so much and it gives me so much joy to, to see that I can learn from you, which is fantastic. Well, that's very nice of you to say. I, you know, knowing how exciting it is for me to watch my little one, uh, Sienna, grow, I can only imagine uh, that it must be pretty cool uh, to be able to watch your son, you know, try to do interesting things and solve difficult problems. I appreciate that.